Hey guys, it's Jordan again, and I'm going to give you a quick look at Ubuntu 10.10 .10 Alpha 1 since it released late last week. Alright, so while I'm starting up my virtual machine, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the web page and just show you some of the new features that are coming in Maverick Meerkat. You'll see here the majority of it so far is just updated packages. There is a newer version of GNOME 2.31, there's KDE 4.5's Beta 1 release, which has with it a new version of Qt's beta. There's Linux kernel 2.6.34. I've heard several people mention that 2.6.35 is supposed to be released with it, so that may not last for long. And that's about it for now. I mean, this is Alpha 1, so there's not going to be a whole lot. If we look at the blueprints, though, there are so many things here that are going to be done, hopefully. A lot of things that have been approved, a lot of things that have been started. If we go in here, you see they're implemented. Maverick kernel version. Uh, new task rotation, you've got Ubuntu Delta reviews, and there are quite a few more things in here. There's talk of support for ButterFS being added, and possibly even adding it as a default. So now that we've got this booted up, let's go ahead and take a look at it. You see Try Ubuntu 10.10, .10, and there you have it. We are in Ubuntu 10.10. .10. Now, one thing I do notice right off the bat, though, is if I move my mouse in and out of the screen, it stays right with it, which means there's they've added some sort of seamless module to it, but I tried resizing earlier and it did not want to resize along with it. But let's just take a quick look and see what we've got in here. My applications, all the accessories look the same. The games look the same. It's got GBrainy, which came with 10.04. Under graphics, we've got FSpot and Simple Scan. I know they were talking about moving to Shotwell, but that appears to not have happened yet. Perhaps that'll happen at a later alpha or maybe even the beta. Under Internet, you've got Empathy, Firefox, all the traditional standard things you'd expect to see. Under Office, again, standard stuff. Sound and video, standard stuff. And the Ubuntu Software Center. You've got pretty much the same Software Center, except we've got a History tab now. So if I come in here under Accessories and just pick the first thing and try to install it, you see it says Use This Source. I don't know if this is going to work or not, honestly. You see we've actually had an application crash here and a new one just popped up. Yeah, uh, I'm guessing that adding the sources on the live CD is, is broken at the moment. Not a big deal, though. The History tab will tell you what you've installed. You see here, By Date, All Installations, All Removals. Seems to be very handy, but at this point, I can't see anything you can do with it. Hopefully, they will add the ability to right-click and uninstall each thing individually. So far, it's basically just a history. I mean, there's nothing you can roll back. Looks like an interesting feature, though. Of course, the buttons are now on the left-hand side, and as we all know, they're supposed to be adding Windicators to the right-hand side. I'm sure that hasn't happened yet, but hopefully in a future release, because I'd love to see what they come up with. But under your places, you've got the standard places. I know there were some people that were upset about not having a more places pop out, but everything that I see is right here. And if you have more than a certain amount, it actually does pop out to the side, if I remember correctly. You see here, I've got several that pop out here to the side. Under System Preferences, we've got, again, very standard. You've got your Broadcast Preferences to go along with your Me menu. You've got, let's see, you've got Preferred Applications, Ubuntu 1. Let's see if there are any Ubuntu 1 settings we can change. I don't want a key ring right now. Yeah, same sort of Ubuntu 1 preferences that came with the last version. Your different devices that you use, the different services that you want to sync. And I have no interest in logging into Ubuntu 1 right now. Let's just check it versus the existing Ubuntu 1 and see what that looks like. And there we go, you'll notice this is almost identical. It is identical at this point. Really no difference there. But let's see, anything else? Computer Janitor, which a lot of people have had trouble out of. By the way, if you're thinking of using Computer Janitor, I would definitely think again. So many people I know have had problems out of it. And you know, this being my first time looking at it, I'm assuming this has something to do with it being on a live CD. Let me just pull it up on my local machine. Yeah, it just shows me what I can do with it. Realistically, this application could stand to have a little bit more information when you pop it up the first time. Because it's not, it's just saying what it's going to do, I suppose. That it's going to remove these applications because they're no longer supported. I've heard of so many people having trouble out of this, so I would recommend not jumping into it. If you're not familiar with it, not comfortable with it. But that's pretty much all there is to Ubuntu 10.10. .10. Obviously, we come in here to GNOME, it's going to show you 2.30.0. It's not moved to 2.31 yet because it's just not available yet. And of course, if I go into my terminal and I type in uname-a, it shows we've got 2.6.34-5. 
so it does already have that newer kernel. It might even have a newer one after that. And really, that's about all there is to this new version of Ubuntu so far. I will be taking a look at Alpha 2, Alpha 3, however far they go down the line. And if there are significant changes in those, I will be making a new video. So, that's all for this first look at Ubuntu 10.10. .10. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.